Welcome to my IPv6 Fundamentals book review. Here we're doing chapter 10, ICMP v6 Neighbor Discovery. Again, all of this material was written, uh, written by Rick Graziani. The book, all the PowerPoints, everything belongs to him. All I'm doing is a lecture review for my courses. Again, we're doing IPv6 Fundamentals. Again, written by Rick Graziani. ISBN numbers for both his book and IPv6 fundamental video. Again, all credit goes to him. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's talk about the introductory to ICMP network discovery, which in chapter 9 we talked about ICMP and we talked a little bit about neighbor discovery, but we're going to go in more in depth now. Remember that the neighbor discovery protocol defines five different packet types. An RS, an RA, uh, again that's going to be more used with dynamic allocation, an SA and an S, or sorry, an NA and an NS, neighbor solicitation and a neighbor advertisement. That's more like what you'd expect to see with IPv4 uh, uh, ARP, and we have a redirect message. And again, that's going to be similar to what you'd expect for ICMP v4. So it's going to be more of a router to device type mapping. So again, if you want to see the processes with this, you could always do debug IPv6 MD. And MD here stands for neighbor discovery. So you can get the additional output. So again, let's go ahead and let's look at the redirect function. It's similar to what you'd expect to see in I, the IP version for ICMP. It's a router informs an originating host of the IP of the router that it's on the lo uh, local link and is closest to the destination. Here we have destination X going to router uh, 1. It can tell you to send it to router 2 because it's closest to the destination. But unlike IPv4, a router informs an originating host at the destination host on a different prefix is on the same link. So here, even if it's a shared link, you can actually have router 1 tell PCA that PCB is on the same actual link. Routers use this redirect function to inform, again, the originating host of a better first hop neighbor to which traffic should be forwarded for a specific destination. Routers use the redirect function for two major purposes. A router will inform the originating host of the IP address of the router on the link local, for example. The term closer in the routing metric function used to reach the destination network segment. This condition can occur when multiple routers are on the same network segment. The originating host chooses the default router and it is not the best one to reach the destination. Hence the redirect message to the router closest to the destination. And the second option would be again redirecting the originating host to the destination host directly. So there are a few common steps so the common general steps for IPv6 redirection process, the originating host sends the unicast packet to the default router. The router processes the packet and notes that the address of the originating host is a neighbor. Additionally, the router notes that both the originating host and the next hopper are on the same link. Third, the router forwards the packet to the appropriate next hop address. Fourth, the router sends the originating host a redirect message in the target address field of the redirected message is the next hop address of the node to which the originating host should be sending the packet. And there it is there. So 10.2, router solicitation and router advertisements. Seems like we just kind of the same material, but we're getting a little bit nittier here. Again, if we're doing a pin automatically, in IPv4, you'd have to get a DHCP server. And you can always verify it with an IP config. 
with IPv6, addressing could be dynamic. As long as you have IPv6 unicast routing enabled, you can have routing messages sent between the nodes and the interconnected devices. Here, you can have an IPv6 enabled PC send a router solicited message to the router. Depending on the option, it may go. Oh, I went back one too many slides. It may actually send a router advertisement that says, hey, use me, or hey, here's part of the information, or hey, check with the ATP, period. Option two, it may get the gateway and most address information from the router, but it may dish out DNS to the ATP server. So again, there are those three options you already discussed. Slack, part of that stateless auto configuration. Option two, Slack with stateless DHCP for DNS resolution. Or three, stateful DHCP. All information is derived from the DHCP server. So DHCP v6 may or may not be uh, needed based off the options that you want. If you're going with option two, DHCP will be limited uh, use. If you go with option three, it will be guaranteed use. All right, so the RE message will return with options one, two, or three. Okay, I know we just covered this in chapter nine, but again, it's gonna be the other configuration flag versus the managed flag versus the auto configuration flag or in conjunction with the auto configuration flag. Option one, both flags are zero. Option two, other flag is set to one, managed set to zero. Option three, other set to zero, managed set to one. And again, we've already talked about configuring flags. We talked about this in chapter eight and in chapter nine. Option three, and again, that auto configuration flag. If the auto configuration is flag is set, then it will grab the information from the router advertisement and use its prefix. If the auto configuration is not set, it will get a temporary address and then pull the information it needs from DHCP. Again, option three, manage configuration one, auto config one. It will get the prefix from the RA. Again, it will be a temporary address, or you can do option three, managed one, auto address set to zero. This will not use the prefix from the RA, so it will not use Slack. That way, you won't have to worry about a temporary address. So let's go ahead and see this in motion. Here we have again an RS and an RA. We have the MAC addresses and the link local addresses. We send a RS with the two being a multicast for all IPv6 routers from our link local MAC address. RA will return with the appropriate FF02 all IPv6 devices and an FF an FE80 which is its link local address. That router advertisement should be sent every 200 seconds or in response to an RS depending on the situation. And using that information, it should be able to grab the information it needs. So let's go ahead and let's look at the RS a little more in depth. Again, it uses an FF02, which is a multicast for all IPv6 routers. It's coming from our link local address and is a router solicitation message. Here we have a router solicitation message. Again, IPv6, you see the appropriate next header, ICMP. 0x3a, you see the destination.
Do you see the appropriate MAC address? Again, that's the multicast MAC for all IPv6 routers. You see the source. You see the destination. That will let you know that it is corresponding to the MAC address. Next header will say use ICMPv6. Again, type 133 in the router source facing message. Here we're using our, our link local address. Basically, this is the MAC address of PC1, but the RA is sent to all IPv6 uh, hosts using its multi uh, cast address. Let's go and look at the RA in response. Again, you have to have IPv6 unicast turned on. That allows you to have the all router multicast group enabled as an address. You have the router advertisement sent again every 200 seconds. Hosts will use the stateless auto configuration, so the M and O flag is set to zero. Again, here we look at our multicast address. Next header, our source address, and our destination. This is a continuation from the last slide, an RA type 134, recommended a hop value, not important for this area, flag set to 00, zero. you'll notice that this is going to be both the managed and other flag. And here's our MAC address for R1, the MPU size, the appropriate prefix length, and the prefix. So now let's go ahead and get into our neighbor solicitation message. All right, so let's talk about an S and an A. So again, the address resolution for IPv4 and 6. No on IPv4 is the MAC. Check its ARP cache. If it doesn't have it, it'll send an ARP request. It should send an ARP request via a broadcast. All the appropriate uh, nodes should respond. If you know the specific IPv4 address, it'll send a broadcast, hey, who has this address? And only that host will respond with an ARP reply. And then it will fill in that ARP cache. That's called ARP over Ethernet. It's basic an ARP request, ARP reply. Ethernet, and that's that broadcast. No an IPv6 address, where is the MAC? It'll check its neighbor cache, send a neighbor solicitation, the appropriate unit should respond, and that will be a neighbor advertisement, and thus allowing it to fill its neighbor cache. That's ICMPv6 over IPv6 over Ethernet. Jesus, that's a mouthful. That's an ICMP v6 and S and A. It's an IPv6 header, then an Ethernet header. And all of that is a, solic a solicited node multicast. So not a broadcast, but a multicast. So kind of interesting, slightly different than what we're used to, but yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this in depth. Here we have the beginning portions. We don't know what we're looking for. We happen to know just the IPv6 address, but we don't know where it's at or anything like that. Let's go ahead and try to ping our neighbor. So we don't know that. It checks the uh, neighbor cache. It's empty. It'll send a neighbor solicitation message. Again, that's going to be a multicast. Solicited node multicast solicitation frame. The PC should get it, should respond to the neighbor advertisement, and that should be a unicast. Finally, the neighbor cache is an updated. Alright, okay, apparently. 
we're going to show it actually in the neighbor cache. So again, here are their neighbor solicitation. Same process. Not sure why there's an extra slide here, but there is. Let's go and look at the in-depth output. Again, that would be a type 135 neighbor solicitation. It should have the target. You should also have the MAC address of the originator or the source. And again, the destination is going to be the appropriate ICMP v6 at 0x3a header. That will show you the next header. It will also show you the source and should show you the destination with the first 64 bits belonging to that multicast address. You'll notice that target is similar to the destination in regards to the remaining 64 bits. First 64 bits should be reserved and should be in that multicast address. Again, you can look at the destination MAC address, and you can also see the appropriate memory. It's a MAC multicast address. Alright, so let's go and look at the neighbor advertisement. Type 136 NA. Again, target the appropriate link local or MAC address of the destination which will now be its source because it's sending a response to the original request. So here it's going to be the link local address of PC2. Target is going to be PC1. But wait, why is target showing still colon 200? Because that is still the IPv6 address of the PC2. It is not the PC1 IP address. So slightly different when we talk about our uh, advertisement. Next header should be set. 0x3a source. Here we're actually going to see the destination address, which is different from our target address. Again, MAC address should be a unicast address for the destination, and it is. So how do we deal with DAD? Duplicate address detection. In IPv4, DAD was also used. But DAD is used to guarantee that all IPv6 unicast addresses are unique on that link. Here we have a global and a link local. The neighbor solicitation, basically a device was in an NS for its own unicast address, whether it be static or dynamic. And after a period of time, if there is no NA that is received, then the address is deemed unique. If an NA is received, then the address is deemed not unique. So once required, the RFC was updated to where it only recommended that slash 64, part of that interface ID, would make duplicate uh, addresses unlikely. Because again, that unicat or that slash 64 using the interface ID, even if you have the prefix set up, that interface ID is more like a general MAC address. It doesn't have to be an MAC address, it typically is. But that way, you can guarantee with some certainty that no addresses will be the same. You can see again that process using the debug IDV6 in D. Next let's talk about our neighbor cache. If we have the address but we don't have the MAC, again we've already talked about the different process for that to happen. Now there are five states. Two noticeable and three transitory. We have a reachable packet that has been received providing confirmation the device is reachable. 
we have STEL. A certain time period has elapsed since the packet has been received from the address. And those are two noticeable. We have three transitive, which will be incomplete, delay, and probable. Again, there it is. All right, if we want to do uh, view our neighbor cache, instead of doing like show arc, we can always do a show IPv6 neighbors, and that will show you the appropriate mapped addresses to the appropriate link local address, MAC address, and its state. Here you're going to notice that we have two addresses, but the same link local address. Why is that? One's a link local address, one is a global unicast address. You'll also notice that the state is stale. If you go to ping the global unicast address, you should be able to see that the state will be transitioned to a reachable state with the appropriate information being updated. If there is no entry, then you'll have to send it an S. And it will show incomplete. What will happen is the three neighbor, uh, neighbor association set with no and A should be returned. And that'll be a, a, no entry exists. If an NA is received, it's reachable. If it's reachable and the time exceeds the default timer, or if unsolicited NA is received, then it's stale. It may, no action could be required, but it may require resolution again. Packet will be sent. It will transition to a delay, resolution pending option, and it will wait for a packet return. Basically, TCP is increasing the acknowledgement. After that, five seconds, should transition to a probe, re-resolution back in process, and if the NS is sent and an NA is received, a transition back to reachable. These are the three NSs sent with no RA or R, not RA, NA return should return back to a non-entry. So if no neighbor acknowledgement is uh, returned, non-entry. Though it does try to do a transition to a reachable, a reachable state, there are times where no entry will be listed. Apparently it does not want to transition. There we go. Again, process that they view it as debug IPv6 and D. Let's go ahead and look at our neighbor cache. Let's go and look at what we'd be seeing if we did a D by IPv6 and we did our ping. You'd actually see the transitions of the commands. Sending a neighbor discovery or a neighbor solicitation message should be discovered, so you should be getting an R. And in A, I keep saying R because I'm just doing the router advertisements and router solicitation not too long ago. So I keep saying R instead of N. The in, uh, NCMP will go to a read state, and then after X amount of time, the read will transition to a STEL state. And that's actually this chapter in a nutshell. Again, for more information, let's go ahead and go back to that IPv6 fundamentals book. All material is provided by Rick Graziani. All material is owned by Rick Graziani. ICM or the ICMB numbers are there for the books and the videos if you want. Again, all of the information is Rick's Graziani's material. If you have any questions, please let me know.